I'm Executive Editor Kim Schmidt. I'm at Agritechnica in Hanover, Germany. Welcome to the Conservation Ag Update. Now back over to Noah in the studio with the latest update. Conservation Ag Update is brought to you by Cultivase. Thank you very much for that introduction, Kim. You can check out some of Kim's reports on the Farm Equipment Facebook page. Welcome to the show. I'm Noah Newman. Great to have you with us. Let's kick things off in Hickory, North Carolina, where no-tiller Russell Hedrick had a new state soybean record in his crosshairs until not one but two tornadoes hit his farm on the same day in September. Now, he expected about 160 bushel yields before that happened, but all things considered, everything turned out pretty well. Russell ended up with around 90 bushels per acre in his high-yielding plot, a little bit short of his state record yield of 117. But this year, he tried something new. He used this deep banding fertilizer bar with the Edder 2996 20-inch coulters to inject 11370 KTS micronutrients and algae four to six inches deep ahead of planting. And he says this helps with late season fertility uptake when there's more soil moisture deeper in the soil later in the summer. So check out the results. The soybeans weighed in at 2,841 seeds per pound in the fields under his normal fertilizer program. That number dropped to 1,736 seeds per pound in the fields with his deep injection fertility program. And look at this, even lower to under 1,400 seeds per pound in the deep injection field that was also under a foliar fertilizer program. So bottom line, lower seeds per pound means bigger seeds and bigger yields. 1,100 to 1,200 seeds per pound is a pretty huge difference. We started working with a program called Foliar RX, and, and essentially it's a way for us to pull tissue samples on our crops, and it actually gives us recommendations on how many ounces of product that we need to apply, whether it's boron, manganese, zinc, uh, phosphorus, I mean, really any element that we're seeing on the tissue samples, it gives us a recommendation in ounces of product that we need to spray to bring that plant back into balance. Because being short on nutrients can be just as detrimental as being too high in nutrients. And so keeping that plant balanced with that foliar program got our seed size down to 1,359 seeds per pound. Those soybeans look like pinto beans. And Hedrick says the Foliar RX program costs him around 50 cents per acre. All right, 34-year-old Ryan Gibbs steps into the farmer feature spotlight this week. The Iowa Farm Bureau presented the Hopkinton, Iowa no-tiller with the Young Farmer Leadership Award, which honors farmers under the age of 35 for their, you guessed it, leadership in the community. And that leadership and passion for conservation farming was on full display when our managing editor, Michaela Paulkner, paid him a visit over the summer. Here he is with his son Kendrick taking bricks readings in corn around V3 with a refractometer. He takes a few leaves, smashes them with a garlic press, and transfers the sap to the refractometer. The bricks reading shows how much sugar content is in the plant, and that's important because low bricks readings indicate a higher risk of insect attack or fungal attack. So Kendrick, what's the verdict? What number is it? How many? Ten. Ten? God, I hope so. Let's find out. <laughs> Um, I would say it is about four. Yeah, if you look at the center one, it is 10, but the center one's not what we're going off of. We're going off the far left, which is four, but it is a hazy line, which is telling me that we are getting adequate calcium, but we are at a bricks reading of four, and it is about 11 o'clock. We probably should have done this a little bit earlier in the morning. Ideally, we want to be over 10. When a plant gets up to, like, say, 13, a insect cannot consume it because it does not have a pancreas so that means the sugar level is so high in it that a insect cannot process them sugars and they'll die if they try to eat the plant gibbs bought the refractometer for about 25 bucks on amazon time now for the cover crop connection let's check in with mccain vogel who's still recovering after his ravens suffered a crushing loss to the cleveland browns thanks noah Check the standings and get back to me when the Browns are in first place. McCain Vogel here for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Charles Barron with Farmers Business Network told me all about the organization's latest innovation, Norm the AI Agronomist. Now, Norm is an online tool that uses artificial intelligence to scan the internet and agronomic research to answer questions about agronomy, farm management practices, and more. Barron says that while it's still in its beta stage, many have already experimented with asking Norm questions about no-till and cover crops, 
and how to best implement those types of conservation ag practices in different climates. Norm's gonna actually give you responses and help you answer questions, and you can have a conversation with it. So if it doesn't answer your question right away, you ask it a follow-up question, and it will keep learning about you and keep learning about your question as you're asking it to give you the best response. Um, it's really pretty fun. It can answer questions about all kinds of stuff, everything from equipment to crop rotation and tillage and uh, agronomic practices. We're training Norm right now on chemical intelligence, so things like labels, um, uh, tank mix data, uh, licensing and pest targeting, uh, so that Norm can be used to support farmers uh, when they're buying products, using products, making agronomic decisions in the field. It's of course not an agronomist, it's, it's, a, it's a technology system, right? So you still need to have uh, that kind of agronomic support um, or veterinary support, but it can help growers answer very, very um, you know, basic or common questions and help them uh, march further along the way in being more autonomous and more independent. One of the common questions people ask about no-till is how do I implement no-till or what should I consider to implement no-till? And Norm will help uh, with that decision-making process. It will help talk through what are the common steps uh, either to introduce no-till on the farm or other management practices that you'd want to consider. And if you'd like to try asking Norm your own cover crop questions, just go to fbn.com slash norm and create a free account. That's all for this week's Cover Crop Connection. Until next time, I'm McCain Vogel. Back to you, Noah. Thank you very much, McCain. Go Browns. Okay, during a recent editorial meeting, our boss, Frank Lesseter, shared an interesting article from the Wall Street Journal talking about how OEMs like Agco and CNH are expanding their presence in the retrofit market, giving them more access to the 93% of global farmers who aren't replacing their old equipment in any given year. So I saw an example of this retrofit mindset from Deere at the Farm Progress Show. The company debuted its new Sea and Spray Premium Package, which can be retrofitted to any sprayer model year 2018 or newer, as opposed to the Sea and Spray Ultimate that can only be purchased from the factory. In their eyes, the retrofit option is easier, faster, and will drive more technology to the farm. If you're looking at you just got a two-year-old sprayer or a four-year-old sprayer, 2019, whatever the case might be, and you're not ready to upgrade to a brand new one, or you just got um, that sprayer and you want to get the latest and greatest technology, you can do that with Scene Spray Premium. You don't have to go buy a whole new sprayer. You can get that as a precision upgrade on your sprayer today. So if you're looking to get a little incremental value on your sprayer and take advantage of this technology, what we're trying to do is not make you fully commit to a totally different sprayer. You can get that, order it, get it um, installed on your sprayer today and get this awesome technology that we're talking about where you can go in the field, spray just weeds and cut down your, your costs and look at better yields. And let's wrap things up with our photo slash video of the week, which features an update on a broadcast versus banded fertilizer study from Beck's Practical Farm Research. Brandon Summers, break it down for us. So we have two different studies here that we work with for our nutrient management studies, one being a fall versus spring applied. So we put in our fall strips today. We'll come back this spring right before we plant and put in the spring applied. And under those, we put 300 pounds of a 50-50 blend of MAP and potash directly underneath the row. And then in our nutrient management study, we look at can we cut rates by the efficiency we pick up using this banding bar behind me. So we look at a 100% rate, a 75, a 50, and then with when we consider our banding bar, we also look at a 25% rate. But we don't just look at strip till in there, we also look at conventional and no-till. And when we do those, we spread that fertilizer with the uh, air delivery system on the back. So we use the same unit. It's just a matter of where we send the fertilizer via different hoses. And here's the results from 2022. Strip till banding with a 25% application rate had the highest ROI at over $47 per acre. Strip till banding at 100% had the highest yield at 217 bushels per acre. The three-year study concludes that although additional data is needed, there's been a fairly consistent trend favoring strip-till banding over no-till broadcasting. And the second part of the study, comparing fall strip-till to spring strip-till, showed a 4.1 bushel advantage to banding P and K with a shank in the spring instead of the fall. More details on that study on notillfarmer.com. Hey, we'd love to see your pictures and videos on the program. Shoot me an email in Newman at lespub.com. That'll do it for this episode of Conservation Ag Update. Thanks for spending part of your busy day here with us. See you next time.